Alrighty then, so ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show. I'm Terry Lynn here with Travis Marziani, and today we're doing kind of a one year recap. So, Travis has joined us since episode 110. Uh, I think it's 162 right now as we're recording. So, we're just going to talk about kind of uh, what's happened the past year and kind of uh, how this kind of has changed our lives uh, throughout, you know, the past couple of months. So, Travis, what's going on? It's, I'm just realizing now, yeah, it's been fun being here for the last year. A lot, a lot of things have changed, and I'm sure we'll talk about that in a bit or later in the episode. But this last week, I kind of took away from the, my e-commerce site. And actually, I've been working on a YouTube channel. And I've talked about it in the last episode. I'm working on a, a YouTube channel where I talk about every week, I'll have e-commerce news and different how-to tutorials. I'm planning on launching the channel around August 30th or so. So look out for that. Nice. And uh, are you just to do this like a weekly thing? Or what's the plan right now for that? Yeah, I think I want to every week have e-commerce news. So it's what's happening, what's going on. For instance, let's say Pinterest comes out with paid ads, which they obviously already have. If you're watching the, the videos, you'd be one of the first people to know about that. And I think that's something that not a lot of podcasts or media channels out there have is not just an educational thing, but it's also kind of fun to watch. And at the same time, it gives you timely advice. But that, that being said, I also do want to do tutorials like seven ways to increase your you know, internet marketing or seven ways to increase your social media marketing, things that are just fun to watch and also educational. Gotcha. And you see the latest news? Um, Amazon's turning off their paid product ads that go off-site, which is kind of not surprised, but... Yeah, I thought that was the dumbest thing to be honest with you before because we've talked about it before in this episode. If you have an e-commerce store, which Amazon obviously is, you don't really want to send people away from your store. So I'm, I'm, that's interesting. Yeah, it's like why would Amazon spend all this money to send people off-site and then Google can harvest that data from Amazon too in your analytics and all those platforms. So it didn't really make sense. So, you know, not surprised. But, you know, like I guess if your business was built on that ad platform, you're probably going to start looking for other channels. But I don't think it was that many people to be honest. Yeah, Yeah, alrighty, so updates for me. Uh, I met with a French fashion startup here in Vietnam last week. Um, They basically, they are two guys that came from kind of rocket internet in Europe, and basically they're doing their own startup here. Uh, Kind of a Huckberry meets Groupon type of thing, and so they have this customer list, kind of of a competitor that somehow they got, uh, I don't know how, but uh, basically they're trying to figure out how to start marketing to this list without spamming, right? Because it's not really their list, so I was like, kind of giving them ideas on how they can start. So we talked about, you know, doing Facebook custom audiences, you know, tagging people on your sites, you know, getting the remarketing cookies, retargeting cookies, all that stuff on because, um, you know, that's how you really kind of have to earn and own your own traffic too, right? So kind of brainstorming stuff there and just kind of moving along the services side. So I will see how this goes uh, down the line. It's crazy to me that these people would get this big list, which is pretty awesome. And their thought is, oh, let's just spam it. That's so like... I don't know, 1999 style marketing. Yeah, well, well they, one of their marketing guys had this idea and they're like, no, we don't want to do this. We want to hear some outside opinions because they're, because like the two guys want to do it right. It's just their marketing guy is an idiot and he wants to spam people. So they kind of brought me in and being like, hey, what can we do with this list without spamming people essentially? So yeah, so basically, you know, it's kind of cool to, it's, it's funny how re, like, you know, I guess when we talk about the podcast a lot, this and that, you think this is stuff everyone knows, but actually it's not. Like even like custom audiences in Facebook, kind of a very basic thing that you can make. And a lot of people still don't know how to use that. Yeah. Yeah. Alrighty, so let's get started then. So one year in review. So you've been co-host for a year. Let's talk about how we met first. How about you bring your side first? Yeah, this is a really interesting story. And I actually, I love telling people this because it all started when I joined the Mastermind uh, about a year ago. And at the time, to me, $99 was this like big sum of money. And I debated it. I debated like, oh, should I spend $99 to join this mastermind? Is it going to be worth it? And it's been incredibly worth it. I mean, not only did I learn a lot from the mastermind, but obviously I got the chance to meet you and now I'm co-hosting here. So it's been crazy like how this small amount of money is snowballed into this whole industry where like now I'm, I started my own podcast, the how to do your twenties podcast, nothing related to this. And then on top of that, I started, I'm going to be starting a YouTube channel. And it's like all that came from the mastermind meeting you being on this podcast. And it's just really cool how it's all happened. And you've met a lot of people at other conferences too, right? Like, Oh, you're with Terry at that podcast and 
Kind yeah, of like <laughs> I've had people, I've had people recognize me. I start telling them my story, and they don't recognize me until I say, "Oh, by the way, I have a dance clothing business." And they're like, "Oh my God, you're Travis!" And I'm like, "Yep, that's me." <laughs> yeah, it's always kind of like it's kind of cool and it's kind of weird because we just talk to the mic and like you know that's it, but you don't know who's listening until they meet you, and you're like, "Oh, like what's your story?" Like, "Oh, I had no idea you're a listener," and it's always kind of interesting to meet meet people like that. Yeah, to your point about the the whole networking thing. It's funny because when I first met you, I had a friend of mine who's very successful in internet marketing and he'd always give me crap because he's like, you don't have any kind of network. I'm the only person you know in this internet marketing world. And it's once again, like not to make you blow up your ego, but like after I met, after I met you, it's like everybody started uh, getting introduced to me and it's like, you know, you meet one other person and that person introduces you to two people and it just butterfly so there's like snowball effect once again it's funny because i'm fairly insulated here in vietnam and asia whereas like us i really don't know what's going on there so it's kind of funny that you mentioned that but actually like for me for my side so around this time last year i've been doing the podcast for what two years now and i was just kind of getting bored of interviewing people like you know like i guess some listeners said it was cool to hear different stories but in terms of like the creative asset of going through questions and doing that whole process just kind of got old for me too. So I was like, all right, how can I figure this out and kind of switch things up? So I was looking at um, some other people that, you know, they had co-host versions where they also did interviews, but I was like, all right, maybe I just bring a co-host on and then someone that has experience too that we just have a back and forth thing uh, every week and kind of, you know, that's where we've been. And then, um, you know, I guess there was one conversation we had during the calls, I guess, or before the calls, I guess we were just kind of blabbering on Skype for a while after that, I was like, oh, this kid's, this kid's pretty smart. Maybe we just think about him, you know, bring him on as a co-host and we'll see what he says. And then, you know, here we are. So, Yeah, it's funny. I remember when you asked me, first off, the first episode, if anybody wants to go back and listen, I was so nervous. And I wasn't, I wasn't sure if you were, because you said co-host, but I'm like, he must just mean uh, as a guest or something. And so at the end of the episode, I'm like, okay, well, thanks for having me on. And you're like, yeah, all right, we'll see you next week too. And I'm like, oh, for real? Like, cool. All right. Why not? Yeah. Well, the first one you were kind of really official and like really like oh I gotta be, I gotta prepare to like you know be really proper and stuff like that. But now we're just like ah whatever like kind of keep it casual, right? Yeah, I remember because you told me like all right, make sure you're gonna tell your story. I had like this whole list of my bullet points and my story, and I rehearsed it. And then we got on. I ended up shorting down like a 15 minute story basically to like three minutes. You're like all right, cool, let's move on. And I'm like oh, okay, now what? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I guess the next thing is that we actually met in March this year after, what, about six months or so when you were kind of just traveling around a little bit. So that was pretty cool, too. That was really cool. It's funny, you know, we've been talking for so long at that point. Like, I felt like I know you better than I know most of my friends currently now, just because I don't talk with my friends every week like this either. You know, it's like I, I see them when I can. So it's kind of cool to finally get to meet you. Yeah, it was kind of cool. It was like when we met, it was just like, oh, hey, what's up? Let's just go eat. And then it was like, it was like it was like we already knew each other, which obviously we do, but it was just kind of funny. Where like when you meet someone brand new, you're like, oh, what do you do? What are you doing? And then, you know, where are you from? Like, all that usual, you know, the usual twenty questions you got to go through before you really talk about cool stuff. Yeah, and we kind of just bypass all that stuff yeah, too. Yeah, so. that was cool. Yeah, so I guess so I guess let's talk about uh, business wise. How has that impacted you? I guess from like B Dancewear and everything like that. Are you talking about with the podcasting being like yeah, a co-host? just, just either just as co-host or as a part of the mastermind, just in general, I guess. Uh, so I think the biggest one, the mastermind really did help me and and the and this being the co-host because I feel like before I was kind of in my own world. Like there was a couple people every once in a while I could talk to about it, but I had all these ideas jumping around in my head and nobody really cared. I remember when I first got a virtual assistant, this is back about a little over a year ago, and I ha- I told all my friends and I was so excited and like every day I'd see them, I was in Rio at the time. Every day I'd see them, I'd be like, oh my God, I have this virtual assistant and it's so cool and they could care less. But as soon as I was in the mastermind and part of the calls and all that kind of stuff, everybody was excited when I had that kind of news. They're like, yeah, that's awesome. And there was something about like when someone else is speaking the same language as you, I kind of got over it. Like we're with my friends. I'm like, you guys don't understand how big of a deal this is. Like I need to tell you again and again. But as soon as, as soon as like someone else speaks your language, you're like, yeah, okay, now I'm ready for that next accomplishment. So the, the biggest thing for me has been getting out of my own head and being able to bounce ideas off other people, whether it be you through this podcast or the mastermind groups in general. Yeah, I remember we had a big chat like a couple of months ago about like the financials and stuff like that, like getting like a bookkeeper and giving thing, 
everything like all track too because like if i didn't talk to other people that knew this stuff i'd like be spinning my own wheels too yeah absolutely and, and i think also going both with the mastermind and the podcast it's been giving me some accountability and like there's been times where i said okay i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna get it done by this date and for instance, actually, a great example is the YouTube channel I'm working on. It's not ready to go yet, but I just said earlier in the podcast, it'll be ready August 30th. You better bet I'm going to get it out by August 30th. Otherwise, if I didn't set a date and I didn't have this accountability, I'd probably never do it. So that's been very helpful. Yeah. And you don't want to look bad on the record to all the, everyone listening right now, too. <laughs> yeah. And the same thing happens with the mastermind. Every week, it's like, oh, you know, I've been meaning to do this for a year and uh, I'm actually going to do it by next week. And then when I come next week, if I don't get it done, it's like, why? Why didn't you get this done? So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I guess for me, um, pretty much we started the mastermind around this time last year. So, it's kind of interesting how it's kind of, you know, gone well and then kind of went down a little bit. So, I think a couple of mistakes that um, we did with e-commerce profit. So, I guess uh, we're kind of redoing it, um, you know, in a couple of weeks as you're listening to this now too. So, I guess a couple of lessons and mistakes we learned from the last round was that I guess there was platform friction. Uh, so we used a custom platform called, um, what was it, Zenforo? Yeah, it was a forum software. And basically, I think there was too much friction for people to remember to log in to this other forum. Uh, so since then, we've kind of closed it down a little bit. We'll be reopening it um, on a Facebook group. So I think uh, that probably was a big mistake we did from last round. And I don't know, because like, I, I was looking at the logs and you know people were checking in like once a month. So I was like, oh, okay, there's something wrong here. To be honest, even I'd forget because it's just, it wasn't a habit. And when I would log in, it wouldn't, there'd be kind of crickets. So I was like, okay, well, when there's, when you log in and there's no one really talking, you kind of, or, or we'd have to dig so deep. I wouldn't know what thread people were having good conversations in. So yeah, it, it was not great for me personally. Yeah. Hey, I was reading some software books later on like SaaS companies and basically Sarah was saying you have 90 days to really get people ingrained in the habit of logging in or using your software. Otherwise they basically just drop off. And I think that's what happened to us too. But but we still had the calls. It was just the post discussions. Um, you know, it was either somewhat useful or not very useful at all too. So um, basically, I think the calls were what where people found the most value. So that's what we're going to keep uh, going forward. And I guess the third thing uh, that kind of we had wrong was probably the skin in the game and the pricing model. So we had it as of a ninety nine dollars for lifetime. And what happened was that. Uh, you would pay that, which, you know, a lot of people are excited about. But then once you get into like a month, two months into the calls, uh, if you can't make a call, there's really no consequence for you to not, uh, you know, to skip out. And so basically this kind of, you know, affects the uh, quality of the call the other members get too, And basically it kind of snowballs from there too. So Yeah, I think that that's a big problem is people, everybody knows in the e-commerce world, you should do masterminds. You should be talking with other people in this industry, but it's, you forget. And then if you miss a call, it's like, oh, well, whatever. I'm just going to stop doing it. But I think it's one of those things where if you put some money on the line and there's websites that do this kind of stuff, like stick, for instance, says, all right, I want to make this goal to lose weight. I'm going to bet $500 that I'm going to lose weight. I think it's the same thing with masterminds. It's like, it's, it's hard to change a habit and start doing it. But as soon as you do it for more than a few weeks, you realize, wow, this is actually very valuable. So I think that new pricing model is going to, it'll help people realize that, oh, this is actually very valuable. Yeah. And if you don't go, there's a consequence to you for a little bit yeah. to actually miss out too. So it kind of it incentivizes everything more correctly, I think. Yeah. So. it's You've paid for it either way. Do you want to show up or do you not want to show up? It's up to you. Yeah, so that'll be something different in the next round too. So I guess what else, something else that's different is kind of the Facebook group that like we mentioned earlier. So when we talk about platform friction, like you got to log into another forum. Sometimes you forget your password, you got to reset it, you got to wait for that email to show up. It's just like waste so much time. Whereas like Facebook generally, if you keep the quality of discussion high enough, uh, you can just check into a group every once in a while. You know, even if you turn off notifications, it's really easy to just click two tabs and like check it to see what's going on too as you go. And you know, you have your profile picture there, all your info, you don't need to like create a new profile and like confirm your email and all this mumbo jumbo that you got to do with it. And it's always like the recent conversations go to the top and you can, one of the things that I've liked in the Facebook groups that I'm a part of is if you ask a question, you are going to get an answer. But the forums, if you ask a question, most people don't know you even asked a question. There, there's no, there's no pop up. It's not at the top. I really think the Facebook group's gonna work out well for that. Yeah. And the cool thing is, it tells you how many people have seen your post when you post something. Like that. So you know, like you know, if 
no one's seen it or people are seeing it but they're not answering or things like that too. Yeah, and then people can like it too. So if you have some big accomplishment, because the, the truth is sometimes you just want to tell people like, hey, I'm really happy I got this done. I don't necessarily need an answer. And on forums, you can't just say, hey guys, just landed this big you know, uh, account. Please leave a comment below if you like it. No, that's too much work. No one's going to leave a comment below. But on Facebook, it's like a nice little spot to be able to brag about that. Yeah, it's like a mix of status updates slash discussions slash, you know, kind of casual conversation that kind of makes it a little more easier to go, I guess. So uh, that's what we'll be doing a little bit different this time too. So I guess what else is different? Uh, Travis is going to actually lead this round. So why don't you talk about this? Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited because I think that by leading it, I can kind of give some of my own feedback and obviously make it so it's easier for you guys to do the mastermind. That way it's not like, oh, well, whose turn is it to talk, blah, blah, blah. It's very organized. And I've run a couple, I've been in masterminds that I both run and not run. And it seems like if there's not really someone kind of leading it and determining who goes when and et cetera, it kind of falls apart because it's this, there's no organization. So people are just like, oh, it feels messy and they leave. So I'm excited to be lead, leading it. Yeah, I think we kind of had that the last round, but what happened was that some people would just not be able to join the call and then there'd be, no, and then it was like the skin in the game thing we talked about, right? So hopefully these things will kind of fix each other in kind of a virtuous cycle as what we're doing a little bit different this time too. So uh, I'll probably still join in a little bit. It's just that I'm working on some client work now, so a little bit tied down uh, while I've kind of fixed up that side of my business. So I guess uh, let's just talk about the offer then. So what's the offer then, Travis? So what we're going to do it is it's going to eventually be $99 a month uh, reoccurring. And if anyone signs up before the end of the month, so I think that's what, August 31st, it's going to be $79 a month. And the way we're going to charge it out is three months at a time. That way, you really do have some, like we said, skin in the game. Because I think, once again, a lot of people, they have this problem where it's like, oh, I'll try it for a month, you know, quit, and then just stop going. I think three months is enough time that you're going to realize, okay, this actually is valuable and keep it going. It's like anything in life. If you only give it a few weeks to see if, it, if it's good or not, you might not continue going. But I think this new model will definitely be beneficial. Um, the format, so the format this time will be a little bit different too. So before in the Mafia, we had it every two weeks where everyone gets 20 minutes. But we found that by going 20 minutes, you don't really get that much time or focus on your business you can't really go in depth so what we're going to do is now it's going to be weekly call and uh, the one person will be in the hot seat every time. yeah so i think there's a lot of reasons that weekly in my opinion is better one instead of a bi-weekly call that's like an hour and a half two hours weekly it can be a solid hour and it's the same time every week so for instance if every wednesday at five o'clock you know all right after i get home from the gym i go on this call it's easy to remember and on top of that one of the benefits is once a month, everybody in the group is focused on your business, including myself. Like everybody there will be focused on trying to help you out. And the other weeks of the month, everyone else is, everyone's focused on a different person, but at the same time, you're learning from them. I can't tell you how many times I've been in a mastermind and we're all focused on a different person's company. And he asks a question that I have as well. Like, for instance, I recently learned about automating Instagram and it's just, it's amazing. When you're helping someone else, you can actually get a lot of like introspection into your own business. So the new model is going to be weekly, one hour, what's called a rotating hot seat, meaning every week it's focused on a different person within the group. Yeah, gotcha. And also there's a Facebook group for kind of discussions and to kind of keep everyone in touch, linked up. Uh, and also, I guess if you're part of the e original e-commerce mafia, get in touch with us. We do have a special grandfather rate uh, just for you guys because you guys were kind of you know, early adopters of the first model and we want to keep you involved in this new one too. Uh, so I guess that's kind of just a recap. Uh, it's a new Facebook group with weekly calls, uh, three months at a time, and it'll be a weekly hot seat model like Travis just said. And we're having a special just for now, $79 per month for the first three months. And after that's gonna go up to 99. And if you wanna apply this, go to buildmyonlinestore.com slash apply and there'll be a form you can fill out. Um, and then we can uh, kind of get this ball rolling.